Whoa. Well, hello, underwater photographers. Welcome back to Brent Durand Underwater. This is a channel where I share tips and tricks to help you learn and improve your underwater photography and your underwater video. Today, we're talking about Adobe's Firefly and Adobe's regenerative AI. AI is the talk of the town. We know all about general AI, but what's really crazy is regenerative AI and Adobe's regenerative fill. Photographers have been talking all about this and the media has been talking about it as well because we don't know what this means for photographers and professional photographers and even what it means for the definition of photography. Is all photography art now? You know, what is real? What isn't real? Are photographers trying to create an image that they envisioned and is it still a photo? Or is a photo only going to be something that you captured in camera with minimal manipulation? We really don't know yet and people are debating all over the place, but one of the things I think is really important for underwater photography is talking about generative fill because it is such a powerful tool in Adobe Photoshop now and can be used to accomplish a number of different tasks when you're post-processing. First, generative fill can help you generate objects underwater. Think about that. You put in a text command that says add three fish on the left of the frame. Boom, you have three fish on the left of the frame. It is pretty crazy. You can also generate backgrounds. I'm a little more skeptical of this underwater just because there's so much texture in the water and there is a foreground and a background. It may be harder for the algorithm and the AI to manipulate underwater scenes just yet. Um, probably easier at depth where you've just got a dark blue or green gradient, not necessarily ripples of water surface or a sunburst or anything. But let's see, we will find out. The third thing is that you can extend images. So if you want to add more coral reef below a diver or next to a diver or more water above the diver, you can do that. And finally, you can remove objects underwater with generative fill. Now, this is my most important thing and most the, the part of regenerative fill that I'm most curious about because one of the hindrances, one of the enemies of underwater photographers is backscatter. Those pieces of particulate in the water that glow white if you don't have perfect strobe or light positioning. If you haven't seen it yet, check out my video above for strobe positioning. But even with great positioning, you might get backscatter in the video. So I think now let's take a look. Let me test on some photos I've got queued up on the machine and see just how good Adobe's generative fill is for underwater photography and to see if you can edit underwater photos with generative fill and how to edit underwater photos with generative fill. Let's kick the intro and get going. And we're back. Now here's the first image I selected to help test generative fill. Now I never thought much of it just because there's a lot of backscatter on the right side of the frame and the subject just isn't super interesting. Um, but there's a nice gradient here and some open water and of course backscatter I want to see if we can remove. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to generate an object. Why not, right? This is my first time trying it. Now you need to have a selection in place before you can use the the generative fill. So I'm not going to select my subject because AI will pick the subject and probably do a good job with it. If you use Adobe Lightroom, you may have noticed you've got great subject selection, sky selection, and other AI features as part of Adobe Sensei in Lightroom. If you're curious to learn about how to use those as basic Lightroom editing process, leave a comment below. But in the meantime, let me make a selection so that we can use this, uh, this generative fill. So I'm gonna select right here. And you'll notice once I've made a selection, there is a generative fill toolbox that pops up. So I'm gonna click generative fill, and now you see that I can describe what I would like to do. So I'm going to say, add three small fish. And I hit enter, and there we go. So we have three small fish in the frame. Now they look like they belong to a different ocean, but the key thing to look at here is we've got three different options. So we can look again. Um, here's the next option they came up with. And here is the, the third option they've come up with. None of these I'm quite feeling, but let's hit generate again. Let's start again and see. So here's option one, option two, option three, 
option four. Oh, we saw that one already. And now we're back to our previous options, which is nice because it saves those previous options in case I decide one is best. So let me hit V, let me see if I can move these. So it looks like I can move this entire area around if I wanted to. Yeah, so you can move whatever you've added. You could also select it individually and move it using other Photoshop techniques. But anyways, that is pretty cool. Let me change this and see if I can get more specific. There, I've added a vermilion rockfish. Let me hit enter for generate. And here's our vermilion rockfish, wow. So I guess we can rate the result. I'm not even gonna bother because we can tell this is a fake image. What's our next choice? Here we go. And here we go. I feel like I should suggest some of my images to, uh, to Sensei here. Let's do something totally different though. Let's add a scuba diver because that might be more practical in this situation. And here is our scuba diver. Check out those fins and look at that face. We know that there's some interesting stuff going on here with this diver and AI's version of the diver. And we've got an interesting face here as well. And look at that same thing going on with the fins. Those fins are a little better than these fins. Not really a usable dude. So yeah, I think, um, I think I'm not going to use this. So it looks like generating objects as a basic user with Adobe Generative Fill is not good for underwater photography. Now, if you're an advanced user and can source the right inspiration and the right image that Adobe Sensei and the generative AI can pull from, you may get a more realistic addition to the frame, whether it's a fish, a diver, or something else. This is just the very basic prompt letting the, the AI do what it wants. So I'd be curious if anyone has comments below about using it in a more advanced fashion and share those tips with everybody because as we dive in more and learn how to use this more, I'm sure we can get more detailed and more accurate results. Now, one of the cool things is that this is non-destructive. Go Adobe, they always are non-destructive with photos. If you look down here, I'm just gonna turn off this layer mask. That generative layer and that generative fill was simply a layer mask that did not affect my original image, which is super cool. So now let's start working on some of this backscatter, which is really what I've been curious about and where I think we've got that greatest application for underwater photography. So I am going to select a new area. Let's go for most of this area with backscatter. Now I'm gonna be careful and not select any of the algae down at the bottom just because I have a feeling the layer mask is going to behave a bit like the, the dust and scratches filter. Some of you may be familiar with that, but that's a nice way to remove dust and scratches from a gradient of water here. Now you lose detail as soon as there's any detail in the water, like where the sunball is. So you have to be very selective about how you use it and how much you apply the dust and scratches filter. I have a feeling it will be very similar with the, the generative fill for removing backscatter. Now let's click this button and remove white spots. Let's assume it's not smart enough to know what backscatter in underwater photography is. Here we go. And this is our result. Look at that. So this is on, off, on, off. So that fill did a pretty nice job. Now I can immediately see this line here where we had the, the area selection, right? Obviously there's the, the backscatter pieces that are gone inside of the selection and more outside of the selection, but even the gradient of the water looks different. There's definitely a layer here, which is not going to pass as is if you're trying to share this photo, at least in any large format, larger than your phone. Even with a heel brush along the edges and a little bit of blending, you still have different colors. I can clearly see with this layer. So let's go down to our option. Let's go to the next option here. That is looking a little better. I see less of that line where the area selection is. And option three, now I see the line again. So option two is definitely my favorite. The problem is there's still a lot of backscatter here. Let me see if I can give it a better prompt. Remove um, all white spots. And we've got three more variations. Now, this next variation is really smooth. I don't really see that gradient where the area selection is. So that is nice, but there is still white spots right there. Let's check out this next variation. Still spots, but better on the gradient again. And now they've cloned in this piece of algae, which actually looks kind of real. 
so I'm not too worried about it. But for what I'm trying to do by removing all these white spots, I would still have to do a lot of cloning out here. So like heel brush, um, yeah, we'd have to rasterize this layer, um, okay, and then we could kind of come out here and start cloning these spots out. But that defeats the whole purpose of using the generative fill. We want to totally get rid of that backscatter. So not so good in this image. Can you use regenerative fill in underwater photography? To be determined. Let's check this next shot. So here's our next subject. Here's a nudibranch with some backscatter that should be pretty clear. I mean, we've got white and orange in very bright exposure with a dark black exposure. So I'm going to find a, let's do the, the lasso selection tool. So I'm gonna try and get most of the photo here. Let's see how we do creating this selection. Now, you would probably want to be a little cleaner if you're doing this for real. All right, and here we go. Go around the edges. So I've got a selection here. Let me generate fill. And let me describe. Remove all white spots. Here we go, photo two. This is our result. So when I look at this, they did a lot of smoothing and it almost looks like a product of the dust and scratches filter, to be honest. If you've used that, you know that those, those sharp, sharp backscatter spots turn into more of a smooth type of surface like this, to be honest. And you are still gonna have to clone out all these spots. I mean, that doesn't look real at all. I'd much rather go through and clone these spots individually than try and work with this blurred mess. So let's try the next variation. Eh? Not so good, same blurriness. And three, same blurriness. I'm going to go ahead and say that in these two examples of underwater photos, we cannot really use generative fill to remove backscatter. Now let's try one third and final photo. So I've just opened up a photo from a shoot last year and notice there's some backscatter in the side here. And, and this photo didn't make the cut, it wasn't very good, but I am going to create a selection. Um, well, I did find that there was some backscatter here, so it didn't make the cut, but let's get our selection and I'm gonna get the water surface here. Boom, and we're gonna use some generative fill, remove all white spots, and here we go. Now look at that result. So I do not see the area selection, which is pretty cool. Let me toggle this on and off. On with a lot more backscatter, off without much backscatter. This is working well on blue water. But look at the surface. So here is the surface of the water with my original photo. And here is the surface of the water with this generative fill applied to remove backscatter underwater. It is different. Whether someone will notice this difference, I do not know. Here's our next version. Ooh, that's a little better water. So here we go, original, and here's the water. But it looks smoothed out just a touch, like right in this area. Not sure, it again goes to that dust and scratches filter smoothing. I don't like this. I feel like it's, it's duplicating the circular um, area of the water. So would you notice it? I don't know, but when I look at the difference, I do notice it. And here's option three or variation three. And let's see here, it's back on, I didn't have it on. I think this is better still, but it's not quite the same. Uh, I think this one has the best chance of passing and look at that, barely any, well, no backscatter because you can see where the area selection ends and there's some backscatter along the frames. So this works. So that is pretty cool and has huge implications for underwater photography. Now let's figure out extending images. So I'm gonna do a very basic image extension just to see what this generative fill can do. Now I extended the canvas of this image to a nine by 16 instead of the three by two aspect ratio that it was shot at natively because maybe I want to put this in an Instagram story that's nine by 16. So what I'm going to do is make sure I select the new area. As always, we want the selection and generative fill extend the underwater wall on right side with several white metridium anemones. So here we go. Now we, we got a little bit of a bottom, but I guess I didn't specify we don't want a bottom. And look at that image quality. It's just pretty unusable, as if they got that from a 
submersible mixed with a bunch of bad AI hands. So that was worth a shot with just a very, very basic description. Let's see this next variation here. Oh, so that looks like it found a bit of an anemone. Um, those are some Xenia coral polyps, I believe, possibly some bubble coral. So I think this is confused on which ocean it's in. And now we've got these same types of corals. These are definitely bubble coral. Look at those shapes and you can even see it wants to add some of the lines on bubble coral. And these look like a mix between mushrooms and other anemones. So yeah, we've got some other fish here. Looks like some chromis or something that are all blurry. So this isn't going to work. Maybe I need to specify the ocean and that we don't want a sand bottom. So I think the takeaway here is maybe this will work if you have a less complicated wall, but let's check this next image. So here we go. I've extended this other wall image to the right and hopefully this is something easier because we can put some blue water in on the right. So I am going to make my area selection. Here we go. And I think that's good. Generative fill. Now let's say extend blue ocean scene and sloping sand. Yeah. Okay, so that's a trip. That's not at all what we want. I think the sand confused it. That, okay. We are going to try again with a different description because this isn't even close to what it should be doing. Add blue ocean water to right of scuba divers and coral and coral at the bottom. Wow, so we got scuba divers. My prompt should probably not say scuba divers. Oh, look at these divers, cool stuff. And more divers. This one's got fins that separate. So yeah, this prompt doesn't work to write. Let me remove all references of scuba divers and coral. Here's our last shot. And we're back to just water. We are not, oh, that's the wrong blue gradient. And that's just uh, almost like looking down onto white sand in like Bimini or somewhere with white sand. So here's another example. I tried to find an image that I think might work a little better in terms of a foreground. Generative fill. Well, this is interesting. Uh, the coral looks okay, but I don't know what's going on at the bottom here. Let's go to our next variation. Ooh, that looks totally fake, but from afar on social media, that might actually look like it works. And here's another one. Again, looks totally fake, but from afar on social media, could look like it works. Wow. I think the takeaway from looking at this is that it is trying, but the AI just needs to learn more, see more underwater images before it can produce a realistic effect, at least in terms of the coral reef on this particular example. So let's try another example. And here's the next example. Let me select the area and we're gonna generative fill, extend coral scene below original image. Let's see what that does. All right, well, this is a similar result where it listened to the prompt, but the coral just doesn't look super realistic. I can probably fix this line we see right here at the border of the area selection. Let's look at the next variant, next variation. That just doesn't look real. I mean, that's pretty trippy there. Might need to break out your cave diver certification. Let's continue. Not so real. So. I'm sure we can massage this and make this look a lot more real, but just on a very quick first test, not accurate enough to pass. So I'm a fan. I think that backscatter is an area where we can really take advantage of generative fill with Adobe Firefly and Adobe's regenerative AI technology. And I think that will continue to get better underwater as the, the AI learns more about underwater scenes. We saw that we can't really add images and even fish gets pretty bad. And we also saw that extending the area of the image is very particular. I didn't get good success in these first trials, but I've seen other successful trials uh, online with other people doing it with specific images and probably better prompts. So we will see how all this shakes out. We will see if any rules 
rules in photo contests change? I don't expect so because most of the spirit behind the rules is that you want to, to show the intent of the image. So some backscatter removal, cropping is usually okay, even flipping um, along different axes is okay. But once you start talking about adding or removing divers and fish, or even extending the, the frame or changing the aspect ratio by generating a fake area of the frame, that's going to be pretty frowned upon because at that point, it's not about photo skills, it's about producing the final product and it's more a, a piece of art. So this is all subject to personal interpretation. You know, Please leave your comments below. Let's have a discussion here. Hopefully that discussion will allow me to shoot future videos. So ask your questions about this, about generative fill for underwater photography, or even about different layer masks and some of the powerful layering tools we're seeing in Adobe Lightroom, like subject selection, because all of these, this technology is playing off the same Adobe Sensei uh, AI technology. Thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing even more, and I'll see you in the next video.